All right, welcome to the weekly IT security labs live streams. And it looks like we are live on YouTube. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes here. We are a little early. We should start at 9 p.m. every weekday. No, 9 p.m. every Sunday, uh, Central Standard Time. And today we're going to be going through the honeypot that I deployed in Azure. Last time I posted on our, on our Facebook page that I deployed a honeypot on Azure and people were very interested in seeing. So I'm going to show you today live how this honeypot is doing on Azure, which I think is great. I powered it off yesterday so that I don't get too much uh, noise. But today I'm just going to go through this with you guys and um, show you how the honeypot did on Azure which I think is uh, very, very interesting. Let me just wait a minute here for others to join and maybe I'll post it in our Facebook group to remind others that we are studying. Then we can go through this. Then I also want us to end with picking a machine that we can work on on Hack the Box. So just give me one minute here. Let me remind everybody that we are live. I see people are joining. So let's go to Facebook. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, it's wonderful. We are getting about 600 people a week, which is amazing. So yeah, um, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, please uh, consider joining the group. It's, uh, it's a nice growing community. And a lot of people are coming over there. Hey Jacob, how, how is it going? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining these uh, weekly live streams that we have here. Let me post this quick. All right. Again, thank you all for joining. I appreciate everybody's uh, taking time. I know this is uh, this is you could be doing something else. So let me oh, move my microphone here. How is the audio going for us? Um, see, Jacob is here. Says here. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Jacob. Appreciate uh, taking time to join us. Um, how was everybody's week? Let me know in the comments uh, so we can get ready and um, sort of show you. So for those who are brand new to this channel, I just want to bring you up to speed. Every Sunday at 9 p.m., we have a live stream. We have a Hack the Box team, uh, Hack the Box, which is a platform where we learn uh, pen testing. And every Sunday, we pick a machine that we're going to work on as a team. And as a team, we work on that machine throughout the week. Usually we have been picking the easy to medium machines and because of that progress right now, I have gone from ranking number 800 on Hack the Box. Right now, I think I'm number 170 in the Hall of Fame because we've been doing it for a while now. I've completed so many machines and obviously our skill levels are increasing. So if you haven't, please consider joining our team. There are two people that I'm going to add right now to our team. Uh, on hack the box and make the commitment that uh, when you're working on a machine try your best and if you have any questions reach out to any of us and the goal is for us to end up with a team of people that have been doing it for so long that we get really good at what we do and we become really better and we motivate each other otherwise um that's that's the whole goal of these live streams. And in addition to that, I get to show you some of my uh, crazy ideas that I've been working on. The two things that I posted in our Facebook group, uh, one of them was this honeypot here, uh, which I'm going to share with you. Then another one was uh, the Elastic Seam solution uh, that I'm running in my house. I want to show you that today because I'm actually running some live data on it. I don't want to show accidentally show you uh, some IP addresses and services that I'm running 
but I might make a video that I can edit and blur out some things. It's a very, very interesting um, seam solution that I'm working on. And they're all based on the Kibana Elastic Sage uh, cluster. So you can tell that I'm a little bit more interested and invested in that. Other than that, guys, um, thank you uh, for, for, for joining. Uh, Juniper Blake says you can hear me. <laughs> okay, I see. Someone is, is having some adult beverages. Okay. And Amy, yes, that Twitter hack was crazy. Wasn't that amazing though? I, I appreciate um, people who are clever in what they do and the fact that they could even get to that point where they can use social engineering, very little skill to gain um, access to Twitter was really, really insane. I thought that was insane. Um, I'm curious what others, pe other people think as well in the comments. But yeah, it was, it was, it was too, too, too crazy. Twitter was just uh, too crazy. All right, guys. So today's stream, like I said in the um, tag, I wanted to show you the results that I got from running um, Teapot in Azure. Uh, mostly, I wanted to show, share with you the results. Then um, if people are interested, I can tell you exactly how I did it and how I deployed in Azure. We can look at how much it cost, but I don't think it costs that much, and how I deployed it in a very safe way, and also how I'm able to access it. As you can see, I'm accessing it from this IP address 10.0.0.5. This is an Azure um, internal IP. I wasn't taking any chances of having myself uh, opening the, those ports to my house, but of course I do have remote desktop access to one machine in my lab in Azure. But before we do that, let's just do a quick rundown of what Teapot is. For some people might not understand um, what a honeypot is and what Teapot is. So let's just do a quick Google search here. There's a really wonderful um, GitHub page that I think everybody should should just go and, and use. So this is the one of the pages that I used to learn about Teapot is it, it's a multi honeypot platform. So it's not one honeypot. Uh, it's a multiple honeypots in one. So if you're wondering what is a honeypot, a honeypot is an intentionally vulnerable machine that you deploy in your network or um, in your DMZ in order to trap an attacker. Think about a honeypot as something that if an attacker gets into your network, they're looking for anything and everything. And the first thing that they will see is a honeypot. And a honeypot is going to alert you as the administrator or as a security administrator that somebody is snooping around in your network. So it's, take it as a trap to uh, alert you if somebody's in your network or in your house. So you put something that entices them. They're like, wow, there's remote desktop open. I wonder what's going on. The moment they're poking there, you now know that somebody is in your network. It's a very, very good uh, tool to use for that. So you see people deploy it in their DMZ and they will deploy it um, maybe within some segments of their networks so that if somebody accidentally gets there and they, they don't know the network and they're looking, they'll be alerted. So you are putting traps within your network. So if somebody's snooping around trying to find services that are vulnerable, you will know. Another way that people use honeypots uh, like this is they use them to study uh, the attackers and the behavior of the attackers. So they'll put a honeypot, say, um, in their DMZ to try to understand what kind of attacks are people targeting towards your institution? What kind of attack are people really looking for remote desktop RDP? Are they looking for SSH? Are they looking for a specific vulnerable web app? Depending on which industry you are, attackers might target you based on what you might be running. So if you are in the construction industry, they might be looking for a vulnerable construction software if it's a targeted attack. So honeypots do have a place. And in addition to that, they are also something that you want to be very careful when you are deploying them. You don't want to deploy a honeypot without properly securing it because you don't want people to compromise a honeypot and end up in your network. That's why having it in Azure, away from my house, is the safest way. I, I, I've run it, ran it here, of course. And, um, but right now I, I, I don't want to be running it here. And um, Juniper Blake said they're also good for threat intel analysis. Yeah, you want to see how many, um, what kind of attacks are out there? How many um, scripts are running on the internet 
targeting specific things. So that brings us to Teapot. So I, I highly encourage everybody to go and read about this Teapot. I'm putting it in the comments right now. So that's the page that I have uh, in the comments. Make sure that you read about them. But we do have um, the background information, the different honeypots that are in here are also specified, the technical concepts. So if this is something that interests you, I suggest that you uh, take some time to read it. It takes less than 15 minutes to deploy in Azure. It's very simple. Um, there are some system requirements. It needs a little bit of resources. Like uh, for RAM, I think I had to give it, what, 8 or 16 gigs of RAM just to make sure that it performs well. But um, if you want, this is where you can find more, more of the information in the QA. So now let's look at what really happened when I deployed this thing last week and let it run. I just let it run and I just wanted to see what happens. Oh, nice. Uh, so before that, um, Kobe said, started watching my video since last week. Subscribe to the Box this week. Hacked four machines this weekend. Awesome. You must be doing something right if you hacked four machines your first weekend. When I first started Hack the Box, I could barely hack a machine. That was a long time, long time ago. And um, yeah, if you could hack four machines in a weekend, good job. All right, so let's start by looking at the types of um, attacks that happened uh, based on honeypots. Since Teapot is multiple honeypots, we have this one, Honey Trap, Cory. As you can see, the most common one was this one. Diana, I uh, can't even say that word. Let's go back to their documentation here and quickly find out who, what does that do. I'm not going to even. I'm showing you this so that you don't have to rely on. Oh, by the way, I also have another video. This one is my video on my channel that I say is what is a honey part and I go in detail. I deployed teapot then as well. But um, so if you are interested in learning about the honey pot, I have a video there. That's interesting that um, my video is one of the videos that show up. Oh, it's taking me there again. All right, so this one is the most attacked honeypot of all time. Let's let's read what, what it does. It's meant uh, to be a nemesis sensor embedding Python scripting language to detect shell codes supporting IPv6 and TLS. Of course, according to the OWASP top 10, what is the most uh, persistent attack out there? Actually, for a few years now, it's injections. So you can see that it's uh, going to be detecting shell codes. That means all those automated scripts that people put on the internet looking for uh, shell injections, vulnerable applications. Most of these are probably going to be from um, automated scripts. They are actually not people sitting. Oh, well, maybe, maybe some people are doing it, but usually these are just automated uh, scripts that are running. So of course, the very first one, the biggest one, is uh, this injection shell code type of attacks coming in for this honeypot. Then, of course, uh, we have the honey trap coming second. This is over maybe a four, six day period. Yeah, so this is over maybe a four or six day period. So this is a lot of attacks. And the next one was the honey trap attacks. Let's go back to our teapot documentation and then let's go to our honey trap what are we looking for oh we don't have that let's do a teapot honey trap or you can deploy these um honey pots independently Somebody just combine them so you can have your honey trap by itself without a teapot. So let's go to their GitHub page. And here is our honey trap. So this was number two. We want to see what kind of attack is it. Honey trap is a network security tool written to observe attacks against TCP UDP services 
it runs on a daemon and starts save server processes dynamically on requested post a server emulates a well-known service by simply sending captured network traffic to a connected host so they're just emulating certain services um mostly people have these services uh, that they know people don't patch for example um eternal boo is still running in the wild so somebody can have a script that's just looking for that um service and the ports that it opens scanning the internet and trying to automatically pawn it so th that's what we have on number two here where um it's not just one uh, service it, this honey trap is emulating well-known uh, attack surfaces and that's the second one then of course we have Cory and we have Her heralding these ones where Cory actually was second with 20,000 as well so it's worth our time here to come and um do some digging and i'm showing you this so if you are really interested and you really get interested in this stuff um this is where you can found, find some more information about it without um wasting time re-listening to this video so what is cory cory is a medium to high in interac interaction ssh and tailnet honey and for designed to log brute force attacks and show interaction performed by an attacker so somebody who's running any random brute force attacks that's where we have uh, on Cori. And again, this is over a four, I think, was it four or five days worth of running in, um, in, a, in my honeypot in Azure. So as you can see, just by looking at the very top line here, you can start understanding, okay, so this is what people are working on. People are scanning the internet for shell code. That's the biggest attack surface here. And as you can see the difference between these and just this one alone is 143 up to 20 that's a big difference which is why um injections are high on the os 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 top 10. so that's if there that's one thing that i just wanted to highlight that here yeah, injections they still seem like they are part of what attackers are doing rdp play um it was was low and all these others but it was interesting to see then Let's look at um, something interesting here. I like to look at the ports. 445 was right here. The GOIPs, um, I learned very quickly after making my first video about uh, honey parts that um, remember that these IP addresses or this GOIP information that you see here you need to take it with a grain of salt because attackers are getting really good at this. They can spoof IP addresses to, they can use, um, they might be using VPNs. There's all kinds of things that go in uh, geolocation based on IP addresses. So when you see these uh, names like Vietnam um, was was the highest here and it did 445 is the main port and this one was uh, for, 3389 which country was that you you should take this information with a grain of salt because people can spoof ip addresses but we do we're running alerts here and here's some suricata events that we're running and attempted administrator let's see well what was the highest one then potential corporate uh, violations was the second one um depending on how much you want to dig deep into this information it might be interesting but so far this is what we see uh the top attacks by country uh we have vietnam here leading over this time when i was doing this again probably probably um spoofed somebody spoofed something here so this is um something we can see uh united states was second russia <laughs> Venezuela, India, it looks like uh, the distribution wasn't too bad. And I'm just interested. Last time I did this, Vietnam was nowhere on top. So I'm interested in seeing why um, this happened. Um, the distribution was mostly on Windows 7 or 8. Interesting. Linux, and we even have that one there. Windows XP, interesting enough. In 2020, we still have to, uh, Windows XP out there. So as you can see, you can have a blast working with uh, honeypots. You can see um, really interesting information 
working with these honey pads or oh, I put I, I only specified for Vietnam here so let's go down here interesting enough for the usernames these are the most um, seeked after by these bots or these robots or these attackers root of course they, they're going for root when they're brute forcing and doing all the other things admin is next but look at the other interesting ones pi most people are running pi uh, raspberry pies Yes, so uh, it says attacks from Ireland is also command. Yeah, and last time when I was working with this uh, honeypot, I found out that these attacks are usually coming from spoofed IP addresses, and sometimes um, most of these IP addresses, if you dig further, they're coming from some data center somewhere. Uh, maybe somebody misconfigured a server, they took it over, and stuff like that. But yeah, the most interesting names are these. WebLogic is another one. I thought that was interesting. Administrator, surprisingly, is not that big. I mean, it, it is there, but not that big. Ubuntu is there as well. So here are the usernames people were trying. They were trying Elasticsearch probably because they detected that Kibana was there and uh, Elastic was there. Sysadmin was there as well. So maybe these are not the names you wanna be uh, leaving your systems. Yes, Dogen says, yeah, because of uh, machines in data centers. Yeah, I used to um, run um, to be a system administrator and learning this made me more paranoid to think that my servers that are running in the data center can be compromised by an, an attacker to be used uh, in a command and control situation was um, not something that I wanted to happen. All right, and uh, we're getting really good input here. Um, Juniper Black says a lot of these attacks are even from, from the dark net. Yes, that's why I'm, I emphasize that when you see this location information, uh, don't get too excited. A lot of spoofed and um, people, attackers who are with a grain of salt don't use their own IP addresses. I'm not going to go on my home network right now and t start doing funny business. Even this honeypot that I'm running, I'm running it in Azure on somebody's network. So yeah. But uh, then look at the passwords. One, two, three, four, five, six. Somebody's still using this password somewhere. People are not that um, vigilant when it comes to security. Password is still the biggest one. Uh, admin, computer, 8888. That is interesting. One, two, three. Uh, ABC, one, two, three. A ABC, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Who is still putting these passwords? At some point, we need to stop. Um, <laughs> of course, this um whatever you, however you pronounce this 12 here is also something that um you will see the this is uh was in a report that i was reading the other day that it's one of the common passwords out there so this is the amount of fun that you can have with a honeypot in azure let me show you more so you can see that it's not just that one uh we have specific um dashboards so this is day one for injections now we're digging into uh so what was really happening on this um down near ip um honeypot we can see by protocol right here ftp smb we have some the uh, source ip addresses bad reputations so some of these ip addresses with bad reputations are the ones that are spoofed and people know Attacks by country, Vietnam leading, you know, spoofed by ports and the passwords, which is um, very interesting. And of course, you do have the source IP addresses. And if you go on any online tools and look up these IP addresses, they'll probably have bad reputation. They'll probably be blocked in most of these uh, situations. So if you are interested in a honeypot, this is a fun thing. I mean, we can spend all night here looking at these dashboards, looking at this data and trying to understand what was happening here. If you're interested in just looking at this stuff, understanding more about how attackers are working and how these honeypots works, I highly encourage that you spend some time um, on the uh, documentation for Teapot. It's a wonderful honeypot. This is the second time I've deployed it and this is the second time uh, I have uh, actually shown it to people. This is what it looks like when you sign into the main interface. It comes with um, Kibana. 
which is the part that I was showing you right here. It also comes with um, a back end. If you've done um, administration for Red Hat, this is what it looks like. Um, this is just a, a back end where you can uh, stop and s uh, start your services and all that stuff. It comes with uh, CyberChef, which is just a generic um, CyberChef for decoding stuff, just in case you're working on something. Then um, security meter is just the generic security meter um, site. I'll show you once, once it loads here. It's just interesting. It shows you where attacks are coming from in real time and all that stuff. Then we also have spider foot here, which you can use for different scans if you wanted to. I find this very interesting. So let me know uh, what you guys think are thinking out there. Uh, are there real attacks or bots? I definitely think that most of these are bots. I don't think somebody sat there and was getting excited about my honey parts. I think most attackers are really good and sophisticated to the point where if they get in a honeypot, they know right away that this is not a machine, it's a honeypot and they leave. So there might be a few real attacks, but um, I believe this is bots. This is people who run automated scripts on the internet hoping to get lucky. And that's what, you, what, what we're seeing here. Mostly not somebody who knows what they're doing trying to get into machines. But the fact that they are bots doesn't make it less uh, informative because if somebody's bot successfully gets into your network, they will come, they will wake up and see a report, oh, I got into this network, then they will actually manually or engage with your system. So that was um, my take on uh, the, the teapot in Azure. So how did I deploy this? Let me show you uh, briefly. I don't want to spend too much time uh, on this, but let me let me just sign into my um, Azure here and show you. Was it's a very simple setup. This is an email that I use specifically for this, so don't worry about sending me emails there. I'm okay with that. So I can show you this page without um, worrying too much. So let's minimize that, remove that there, and put my virtual machine. All right, so it's very simple. In my Azure environment here that I use for this specific class, I have two machines. I have a jump box and teapot. And what I'm using these two machines is, I literally have a honeypot running in teapot, which is a Debian machine. Then I have a jump box running Windows 10. That way, I can just access everything in teapot through Azure without um, opening any ports or any funny business. So everything is running in this one and um, it's set up this way. I will post right now a step-by-step -step guide on how you can set up this. I was going to create this, but I, I did a simple Google search and I was like, you know what? Somebody wrote this better than me. They, they don't have a jump box. So I'm, what I'm posting in the comments right now is uh, somebody who did this, something similar to this, but they didn't have a jump box. They opened a bunch of ports to their house, which I think you can, and the instructions work. So here is a document for those who saw my honey part and uh, might want to try it. I post it in the um, comment section. You can sign up for a free Azure account and you get free 30 days. Um, and you get like $200 worth of um, money. That's what I'm doing with this account. So after 30 days, this expires, I move on. You do need to give them some uh, credit card or something like that. Other than that, um, you can deploy it today, soon after this stream if you want. Uh, and that document will tell you a relatively se secure way of doing things. So that's my Azure environment here where I'm running my teapot. And I hope if you are interested, you can deploy yours as well. I'll continue to work on my teapot and analyze more data in there and try to understand it. Otherwise, um, that's what I wanted to cover as far as uh, the honeypot is concerned. Another component that's interesting that I'll probably cover next week is uh, the Elastic Sim. Uh, let me see if I can show you just briefly without exposing too much. 
this one is running in a lab that I've been running for years. If you watch most of my videos uh, on this channel, it's the same lab that I've been running. I've learned so much from this lab. It's amazing how much stuff I've deployed and uh, removed and deployed it again. And this is my new newest obsession right now. So I can show you this right now. And the reason why I'm showing you this is so that you know that when we are learning offensive skills um, on Hack the Box, we also need to uh, keep in mind that we, we need to defend. Not everybody's attacking every single day. We actually, most of the jobs that you see out there, people need you to understand both offensive and defensive. And uh, part of what we are doing right now is um, showing you part of the defense side of um, security, which is where most people spend their time in. All right. I'm just loading a SIM solution here, which is awesome. And you should expect some content from me on, on this one. And the most interesting thing is when you do this and you get so much excitement and fun out of it, it doesn't become uh, a job or a choice. It just becomes part of your, you know, free time. I have, I have some time. I wonder if I can play with it honeypot. Oh, I have some time. I wonder if I can hack on hack the box. You know, those interesting, really interesting things. All right, then uh, soon after this, uh, you just uh, start thinking about which machine can we go after in our hack the box this week? Which machine should we um, attack? All right. Not to give you data fatigue, but hey, this is exciting. This is also free. Uh, you can deploy it wherever you want. Uh, this is in my lab right now. So this is uh, not too serious if you see some IP addresses here. But I just want to share with you. So it's part of the defensive uh, a SIM solution, security events and event log management system. Like this one, I deployed it in my lab. I uh, created a proxy to the internet between my lab and my main home. Or, um, wait, somebody is asking. Let me see. Answer that. Um, so is this available to you? About available for you for your home network? Um, I'm I'm not understanding. Uh, you mean this? Um, if you mean this sim solution that I'm showing you right now, this is not for my home network. This is for my lab. I don't for my home network. I monitor it using Cisco um commercial grade gear Meraki. If you're trying to break into it, I use Cisco Meraki for that. Um, this is for my lab, my lab network that I've been using for a while. And this is on my home network. Yeah. So what I did is uh, when I was learning networking a few years ago, I learned, I learned about VLANs and segmentations and router on a stick. And I created multiple networks at my house. And this is one of the networks. All right. So... I'm sure I show you two things. The first one was a honeypot. This is a SIM solution. This is Elastic SIM uh, by the Elastic Sage team. And as you can see, guys, it works. I just wanted to show you it works. And this thing is AI detection. Uh, I don't know if it's actually working or not. But as you can see, I misconfigured it today. And I said, okay, I have two machines. Actually, now there's three. This is a machine. These are the three clients that I configured with DNS going, say, to 8.8.8.8. .8 I said, does this thing actually detect um, if my clients are using public DNS? And as you can see here, it is. It's complaining about DNS activity going to the Internet. This RDP remote desktop to the Internet is because I was showing you my Azure through RDP. It picked it up. Simple mail transfer to the internet. That one I would have to investigate. What, what machine in my lab is sending? Oh, I think I know. That's my alerting that I was creating here. 
I set this one to alert to a Google uh, account and it's actually picking itself having um, network connectivity to the internet. So what are we doing here? I'm showing you the two uh, interesting sort of pet projects that I've been working on um, for defensive security, for learning about cybersecurity. And I'm hoping this can work as an inspiration. Maybe someone watching will be like, hey, I'm curious. Uh, can I have the elk sim? Then they'll end up doing something like a simple Google search and say, what is an elk sim? And then they end up on the website. It's free, as you can see. I was able to set it up. It didn't take me too long. I'm getting a lot of data. I'm not running, I'm not running it um, for my whole main home but i'm running it in a lab which is controlled the, my next goal i was looking at this i was thinking what else can i do with this i'm going to simulate network attacks i'm going to find a packet spoofer i'm going to find a solution so if you know a solution that can mimic specific network attacks i'm going to put them and see if this thing is going to pick them up and what it looks like and then we can do a packet analysis and actually see what 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 what, what it looks like all right, are you interested in Splunk? Yes, um, Splunk, uh, funny that you mentioned that. Um, right now, actually, uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I teach a class. Um, and the class that I teach for a few people that I, um, I, I have, we are learning Splunk is the same solution. Why am I not using Splunk here? I'm not using Splunk because I don't like the licensing problems, the limitations that comes with it. This SIM solution that you're looking at is 100% free, for now at least. You just have to go through the hassle of setting it up, which is great. But yes, Splunk is powerful. Splunk comes with a lot of plugins. The SPO, the Splunk language for querying things, it's interesting, it's great. And it's also a platform that can get you a job out there. So, and the way I see Splunk and this, they're all the same, really. If you learn Splunk or if you learn this, they all function in the same way. They have plugins. You need to get your data there. You need to work with your data. You need to query the data. Right here in Kibana, you need to make Kibana queries. And if you look at them side by side, they're identical. But yeah, Splunk is definitely um, a wonderful tool. For my class that I'm teaching, we're teaching Splunk. You need to sign up for Splunk Enterprise to have anything significant like um, go on in there. And that's why I avoid it. Other than that, it's great. All right, so that was my little spiel and showing you my honey part and part of my uh, sim. So if you're interested in um, network defense, if you wanna see what uh, uh, the defenders can see, I highly suggest that you play around with this. And this is just amazing, amazing stuff. And coming from here and then generating some traffic on hack the box attacking a machine i think it's, it, it's it's exciting you kind of have an idea when you get into a network you're running those nmap scans they're going to get picked up by something like this and you need to be aware of what this looks like as well all right guys that was a lot of me just mumbling around um let's go back to hack the box for the week because we have to pick a machine that we're going to hack for the week uh, if you are new or if you haven't joined our team, we have a Hack the IT Security Labs team on Hack the Box. And as a team, we pick a machine every week. And when we pick a machine, we try to commit to working on it. As a team, we ask questions on um, Facebook. We also use Discord to help each other. And the people that are there are wonderful and we are all learning. Our goal is to do this for a long time. Imagine if five years from now, we still have these live streams and we've been doing attacking a machine every week, even if you miss one. If you do this for five years, I believe that you're going to become pretty good at this stuff. And I think that's the goal, is for us to just get good. Even though we are busy, most of the machines that we pick take two, three hours a week. So we, don't, we try to pick uh, at least something that's manageable for everybody. So let me see here if I can um, sign in to hack the box so we can pick one. And also add two people that asked to join.
All right. So here is our hack the box platform. Um, uh, here are the current active machines that we can work on. I myself have done all of them except for one, but I'm open. So let me remove the ones that I've completed. So this is the machine that I still have left. I've done all of those other machines over time, including uh, some of the toughest ones in here. But I'm, I'm open to doing any of the machines. My pick for the week, which is a very, very wonderful machine, by the way, which I highly suggest, unless if somebody has a different one, is Sneaky Mailer. I did this machine last night. I got both user and root. And I will tell you, this is one of the easiest machines I have done, mostly because I was amazed at how easy it was to get root, I mean, uh, to get user. Then the root was a little different. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. I'm talking about a different machine. It's called buff. This one. <laughs> Look at the ratings. People have rated this to be extremely easy. 2.6 out of 10. So this is a good machine for those one, those people who want to learn um, the value of enumeration. So when you get into this machine, Look at all the services that are exposed. Look at uh, all the interfaces that are given to you. By doing a simple Google search, you'll find some really good material from Google. Somebody did the work for you. All you have to do is implement what they're showing you. And voila, you're in. But then, um, based on the name, of course, you can sort of ask, guess what this machine is about. It's classic hack the box. And armed with that, you can enumerate more once you get in. And it's a pretty simple machine. So I think I highly suggest that we do buff this week, unless if others um, choose a different one. And if you think we can do a different one, I try to give people a chance to. Otherwise, this machine is only one day old. It was released yesterday afternoon. And so far, people are going to town with it. I have never, we have 708 people who have compromised it, include, including myself. Um, how long did it take for somebody to get root? Oh. To get user, it took somebody three hours. Uh, I'm, I believe it's probably because the machine was just too slow to get the first user. But you can get user in 10 minutes, I'm telling you. And if you have any questions working on this machine before next Sunday, just come to our, our Discord channel and sort of uh, reach out to somebody. Ask for help. Um, tell us what you've done. Of course, we're not going to just give you the answers that defeat the purpose. Other than that, guys, I think this is a wonderful machine for us. So let's lock it in for this week. We are going with buff and we can work on that. I have also been um, this week. I probably want to do this, but I've been doing some challenges, really interesting challenges uh, that are out there. This was my first hardware challenge that I did. 18 hours ago interesting challenges but the challenges are actually are easier once you get into the groove so if you're also interested in learning these skills like slowly um you will see that if you go to my challenges i've done a lot of um stego challenges and now i kind of know what how people are hiding stuff in these challenges like if you are, if you ever are in a ctf environment after doing a but like almost 20 of stegography attacks if you give me a, an image with hidden text in it, I, I probably would be able to crack it in a couple of minutes or so if it's not well hidden. So spend some time doing some challenges. You might gain some skills there. Uh, cryptography is another one where you will learn a ton about crypto. It's amazing. And other than that, um, I think that's what I had for the week, guys. Exciting stuff. Hack the box, buff machine, brand new machine, which we can attack as a team this week. And our honeypot. Matthew says he has Stego. Yes. Um, I used to hate Stego. Uh, that's stegnography. Until I think I did um, the retired machine, uh, retired um uh, challenges then 
all of a sudden it just dawned to me that these things are actually not that bad. The more time you spend there, the more you realize um, they're, they're really good. Uh, Tony's asking me if I've uh, beat F5 load balancer. Not yet. I haven't done that one. Uh, which, which part of this is it? Is it on? Oh, you see, I am already done. Tony, uh, if you don't mind, uh, let me know which part of the Hexbox challenge is it on. Was I, I'll be interested in taking a look at it. Another interesting thing is the the, the ranking here is quite interesting. Uh, I didn't know about this until today and I was looking like I'm on number 170 on the whole fam. Still not sure what that means. And yesterday I noticed that I lost a bunch of points, which made me realize that every time they retire a machine, my points go away, which is also uh, very interesting. All right, other than um, what I showed you, the honeypot and the hex box and my SIM solution, I think um, we are good for the week. So just to remind you, we are going to be working on buff as a team. Uh, if you have any questions, join our Facebook group, our Discord channel, um, seek help, do some reading on it and have fun uh, with this stuff. And if as long as you remain uh, interested in and having a blast, I think uh, you're going to realize that this stuff is extremely fun and sometimes a little addicting. You kind of have to t pull yourself away from it. But I think I find this extremely, extremely fun. All right, before we go, someone asked about Wazara. I haven't seen that system. I read about it. It's highly rated. I haven't tried it. So, uh, Shema, I am not sure about that system, but I have seen it on the top 10 SIM solutions out there. People put it out there and say um, it's a good one. Let me look in the crypto and see if that's where the F5 is. So usually what I do is um, All right, so in the crypto, I only have one left image processing 101. The, uh, no, that's in uh, my Stego. Crypto, I'm done with that. In Stego, I'm, I only have one. Um, you can tell I am not good at, with web. So web, I might have to wait for a little bit. I need to take a web application um, class to really get into that. That's something that I'm a little terrified about it's my weakness so uh, later in the year when I get a chance I'll just get a book uh, or get a course and just really uh, try to understand web apps I can get by especially on hack the box that's why some machines took me a long time to get to because of web applications especially if it involves JavaScript still a little rusty there all right so we Oh, wait. All right. Thank you all for joining uh, this week. I see we had a lot of people join. Um, just as a, a quick recap, uh, I showed you my teapot honeypot, which is running in uh, Azure. I also showed you my local SIM that I deployed in my house right now which I'm hoping uh, is going to be around for a while. It's a, by the Elastic Sim team. The Elastic team just gave it out for free. And then we chose Buff as our machine for the week. So if you are feeling lucky, um, try to uh, hack Buff. If you get stuck trying to get user for more than 30 minutes, um, Reach out to me, I'll be able to just point you in the right direction. It's not worth your, too much of your time. And you're going to realize that getting user was sort of silly. That's, I think that's why the machine is getting bad ratings. Uh, but 
the root part is really, really valuable, especially for those who are trying to go for the OSCP exam. If you practiced one of the most popular machines on the OSCP that everybody says it's free, 30 points. If you practice for the OSCP like I have, you, you get root in no time too. Other than that, um, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to try to finish image processing here for 20 points before I go to bed. I will see you next week and happy hacking. Thanks.